If there's been one series that's been dominating a lot of my life for the past more than a year, it's definitely Super Smash Brothers. From Smash 4's release to my accelerated interest thanks to several Smash events in my university, I have been so invested in this game. And I know for a fact that a lot of you lovely folks out there are invested too. So, after sinking in more hours than I care to count, and after trying my hand at learning to play as almost all the characters in the roster, and with every single character having been released now, I've got it narrowed down to my top 10 favorites. What dictates my favorite characters in Smash isn't quite so simple. Of course, it's how good I am at that character, but it's also how much I enjoy them as a whole. From their design, their fighting style, their moves, their references to games of origin, and just, overall, the experiences I had playing as them. So for full disclosure, tears do not factor in here, because that would be pretty boring. Also, this was a really tough list to make. There are so many characters in Smash that I love playing as, and I'm pretty competent as, and leaving them off the list made me feel really bad. Sorry, Jiggers, I love ya, you know I love ya, but you didn't make the cut. I'm so sorry, girl. Now, with the introduction out of the way and all this footage to work with thanks to you beautiful people watching, let's get right to the smashing! I guess it's only fitting that this should start off with me living up to my name. Sonic Speed! Kickstarting off this list, we have the blue blur himself, Sonic. I said tier lists don't matter, and I'm sticking to that, but I don't like Sonic just because he's apparently in the top 10 of the best characters in Smash Wii U, I even liked him back in Brawly when he was jittery and awkward thanks to me just liking Sonic in general, but the main reason I like him is the central thing about him. His speed. I mean, holy shit he's fast. His running speed, his spin dashing, his aerials, his homing attack- oh, almost every single fiber of his character is about going as fast as you can, so you can confound and overwhelm your opponent with quick assaults and swift retreats, making him a total joy to play as. But I mean, while he has all this stuff that makes him such a competitively viable character, you can also be a piece of shit with him. Whether it be the infamous up air finisher, or my personal favorites, the spring gimp and the stage gimp, it's so easy to start being an utter arse and just mess with your opponent. Hey, and this ties in so well to Sonic as a character. We can all admit that Sonic's character is a bit of an arrogant dick a lot of the time, and you feel precisely that when you mess around with this hedgehog. And sure, maybe I'm not actually that good playing as him in comparison to some characters that were candidates for this list, but man, I really just like Sonic. He's an awesome character that's kind of impossible not to love. Or maybe I'm just biased in regards to stuff like this, I don't know. All I know is, is that Blue Sonic Ult is best Sonic Ult! Let's face it, most of us out there have a Smash waifu. Don't deny it, you do. Samus, Palutena, Lucina, Bowser, everyone has at least one. Mine? Well, that's easy. Prepare yourself! You can keep your bootylicious goddesses and sleek suit-wearing bounty hunters. A cute anime girl that means in sword combat and magic is perfect for me. From her awesome design to her confident and spunky attitude, I can't help but really like this character. I mean, as a waifu. I have different reasons for liking her as a fighter, though. Her fighting style is one that I've never mastered, but I find it so... fascinating. She has so many utterly amazing attacks with so much variety, like her multi-level charging thunder tomes, a flame pillar tome, a spiking multi-projectile recovery tome, a health sapping tome, and her godly powerful leaven sword. So much cool shit! But the different ranges and utility of her attacks mixed with her limited uses makes her moveset incredibly mixed and convoluted. Basically, in order to use Robin to her full potential, you need to play her like, well, a tactician. You need to be able to plan ahead, strategize every approach and every single use of your attacks, and be able to outpredict your opponent, working around their approaches and mistakes to deal heavy blows and attacks. Sounds hard, doesn't it? She's incredibly difficult to play as given her slow movement speed and very steep learning curve, but what makes it worth it is the payoff. Regardless of my skill level, I really enjoy playing as her and seeing what I can pull off with her awesome abilities, 
And when you figure out a tactic that can be used against an opponent and pull it off on an opponent, nothing is sweeter. I will probably never master her, but I will always like playing as her. Simple as that. Plus the waifu stuff. Red waifu is best waifu. Oh no guys, oh, oh god. I think I feel, I think I feel something come back. Oh god, oh god. I don't, I don't think I can contain it. Oh god, I think we're going for it again. <laughs> oh shit, motherfucker. Greninja's making a splash, bitch. Being the character I was most hyped and pumped for to be in Smash, this baller ass, frog ass ninja delivers the pain even without his protein. Dude doesn't even need that shit to kick some fucking ass. Oh, what's that I hear? Better nerf Greninja? Better nerf Greninja? Better nerf Greninja? Yeah, yeah, better nerf Greninja before he runs through the tier list and fucks your shit up! Swiggity swooty, he coming for that booty! What this guy's going for him is style, through and through. I really don't have to point out the fucking swag and class dripping from his glistening long tongue. He'll jump and flip around the stage like a slick son of a bitch, and dish out the pain with all this unique shit. What a shirk him with different levels of power to either deal some damage or just annoy the fuck out of someone. Substitute that'll serve the mass hole right for not knowing their place around the hood with some kawari ass shit. And Shadow Sneak, the most perfect move for a smooth and badass bastard like him. Now you see him, now you're dead! <laughs> you see all you naysayers out there? Greninja's all about the flow. Slip out of it, and you'll be proclaimed the scrubbiest of scrub lords. But find your motherfucking groove, and the swagger will just roll in by the truckload. Why are you bothering explaining anything? Greninja's fucking awesome! You know who else knew Greninja is awesome? Fucking Sakurai! This blue frog bastard was already bumping shoulders with the Smash crew before his first game appearance! Sakurai, this motherfucking bastard and his fucking genius decision making skills. He knew. I knew this swagalicious son of a bitch was gonna be the hypest thing ever. And what we got was the hypest thing ever. Ninja for life, bitch! <laughs> <coughs> oh god. I think that's the last time I'll ever do that. I think it's kind of worn out its hype. Mm. This is the only game series that I will ever say this for. I like playing as Mario more than I like playing as Luigi in Smash. Oh! Ugh, it kind of hurt just saying that. Let's -a go! Mario, 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 Nintendo's most iconic character and number one in order of the Smash Brothers roster in every game. And I've enjoyed him in every single game. Smash 64, honestly not so much because I'm terrible at that game. In Melee, he's one of the few characters I can competently play, and in Brawl, he was a fun character despite how bad he was that I have a great ton of memories playing as. But in Smash 4, he got put on some serious protein shakes. I mean, holy crap, Mario is insanely good in this game. <laughs> Luigi, no, no, please, please don't make me sad. You know I love you, you know I adore you, Luigi. I just like Mario more in this one instance. <laughs> as much as I love Luigi, he's always felt a little... Ugh, to me. Mario, on the other hand, is just so... functional. That's the best way I can describe Mario. Everything just... works. He's a character that anyone on any skill level of Smash can play. The perfect blend of easy to understand, but with some complexities to really build on and be an utter destroying force. But for as much enjoyment as you can get out of the Mario combos that are all the rage nowadays, I really like the cape and flood. They can be so silly in the ways of killing people. I guess Mario's a cool character because he's a beautiful blend of functionality and stupidity. Potential for massive combo strings that can topple even the most veteran players, and of course mixed with some utterly stupid and ridiculous nonsense for all the fun. Plus, it's freaking Mario! His peppy attitude, his enthusiastic yahoos and wahs, and his overall bounciness entirely sums up the mascot of Nintendo. So, it's kinda hard not to like him at least a little. I've never liked playing as Marth. Never have. I just really don't like him. It's one of the cases of I don't know how to play as this character, and I usually have trouble fighting against this character. So when I heard they were bringing back his clone from Melee as DLC, I didn't care in the slightest. We already have a Marth clone in this game, why should we have another one? Let me tell you why. I'll proudly say the meme, Roy is our boy. 
but I like to go a little further with my preferred alt skin, Roy the Golden Boy. This was an interesting one for me. I didn't even think much of Roy until I was at one of my uni smash events where I decided to actually really give him a go and started kicking some serious ass with him, because Roy's kinda fucking awesome. He's everything I found conceptually cool and was used against me as Marth, but in a package I can actually handle. Tremendous launching power and damage potential, with an easy to learn and easy to execute sweet spot on all his attacks. And he's not so much a palette swap like Lucina, thanks to having some different attacks and strikes that greatly varies their playstyles. This one obviously being the one I prefer. Also, friggin' listen to his enthusiasm! Can't not love his attitude. What makes Roy for me is how satisfying his attacks are to land. Hitting that sweet spotted kill move, landing that charged flare blade, finishing out the well placed counter, gaining control with a short hop near approach, comboing out of a down throw, everything just makes him so much of a golden boy in my eyes. His movement, his attacks, his specials, his grabs, satisfying is the best way to describe Roy. I'm now glad that they brought him back in. He truly is our boy. I never thought I'd like this character as much as I do. I honestly never thought I would. But I guess life is full of surprises, isn't it? Genkai wo kaeru. Yep, Cloud Strife. A character that I and a lot of others like to joke would totally get into Smash Brothers. <laughs> oh wait, he did. Huh. Well, that's embarrassing. And he's kind of excellent! I'll be honest, when I first got the DLC, I wasn't amazed by him. His recovery is pitiful without Limit Break, and as a whole, he felt just the slightest bit off to me. But at least I had fun doing constant cloud diddles with the epic failures the day he came out. After playing as him solo for a little bit longer, I started getting into my rhythm with him, and he really is such a great character. Especially with that Advent Children skin, gotta feel the brood. Not only does his Buster Sword give him some pretty fantastic reach, the speed at which he can throw out attacks with that range is even better. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's stupidly absurd sometimes. Not only do his attacks have great range, but his mobility around the stage can make a lot of characters want to rethink their life decisions, except for the part where he... Yeah, this guy's already pretty damn solo just like that, with powerful smashes, a good aerial game, and some kick-ass specials. But then you throw in his Limit Break mechanic. A boost in both ground and aerial mobility, and buffing your specials to some insane proportions? Salt's gonna flow by the truckload. Seriously though, holy shit, his limit breaks are borderline broken! I mean, look at this shit! No wonder this bastard's top tier! But I guess the reason I like Cloud so much is the sheer surprise factor. I was never interested in this character, in any sense. And while the web exploded at his release, I was only mildly interested. I had no intention of playing extensively as him other than to satisfy my curiosity, and was sure I would barely acknowledge his existence. Then I played him, and now he's in my top 5. Maybe it's a mixture of my great love of sword fighting characters with his beautiful set of abilities, and the fact that everything in his arsenal is perfect for being cool and stylish, that made me take an unexpected shine to this JRPG swordsman, and I'm glad I did. Still not interested in playing Final Fantasy though, I don't find him that good guys. You guys remember my Smash waifu Robin, right? Well, she might actually have a bit of competition in the waifu category. You ready for this? Yep, one last DLC character for the list, Corin. The character out of any Smash character I was the least hyped for. I mean, I didn't care at all about Fire Emblem Fates, the male Korn's design and personality was eh to me, and with Bayonetta also being announced, who cares about the new Fire Emblem character? Well, how Korn plays is what made me have a complete 180 about her. Roy took me a couple months before he was on my favorite list, Cloud was a couple weeks. You know how long it took Korn to get on the list? One day. I fell in love with her that fast. Not only is her design and personality way better than the silly male counterpart, especially with the good old hot pink color scheme, her fighting prowess is astounding. 
a very mobile character with numerous movement options including a back air that can be used to assist recovery, devastatingly powerful moves and combos with great range and frame data, and specials that range from a dual move of a far traveling large paralyzing shot and a powerful melee attack, a spear launch with multiple options for attacking movement and mix ups, an effective recovery move packing iframes, and a lot of kill power, and rounding all off with one of the most crazy counters in the entire series. Seriously, countering some attacks can kill on 0% with her. But then they released a patch when I was 2-6 to record, so that point doesn't apply anymore and I should probably have left it out of the script. But at her core, the main reason I love her so much is because she's just so much fun to play as. All of her vigorous partial dragon transformations give her so many ways to overpower and outmaneuver opponents, the varying range, damage, knockback, and utility of her moves making her a real threat on the battlefield. Down airs, sweet spotted side smashes, dragon lunges, so many fun to use incredibly effective techniques. Corrin just has an amazing flow to her, and my god, it's a spectacle to watch her fight. All her flips and elegance mixed with her lunges and strikes make for great entertainment. Plus, her attitude and voice is awesome as well. Clown was a surprise, sure, but Corn goes up and beyond in how amazed I was playing as her. And remember that this is when Bayonetta was released as well. She's just that goddamn good. Plus, she's solid waifu material. That's a big plus for me, folks. One of the greatest things about Smash Brothers as a whole is that it can introduce people to games and series they might not have known about or have been interested in prior. I think all of us have been introduced to at least one game from playing Smash. One of the big ones I've introduced to me has become one of my favorite franchises, and now the character that got me into that series is now my third favorite character in Smash Brothers. Sakurai's own original character, Kirby. He's such a cute little piece of shit. I think everyone for a time at least liked to play as Kirby, mainly due to how effective his recovery is for beginners, and of course, who wouldn't want to fight the King of the Coopers or the Radiant Hero as a big marshmallow? You can't fold that logic. Kirby's a fighter that I've enjoyed playing in every Smash game, despite his supposed varying competency on the battlefield, but when I got into Smash 4 and picked the little Star Warrior up again, a new world of possibilities became obvious to me, especially with his new alt skin. The eyes of a killer. Sure, it's easy to just fly above people and drop down a stone, or using final cutter to hit opponents with the blade or the slash, and while these are kinda good moves, that's barely tapping Kirby's potential. I don't think people realize just how good Kirby's combo game is on low percentage, and just on any percentage, it's pretty crazy just the kind of shit you're able to pull off with him. Having an utterly outstanding aerial game with his multiple jumps and damaging attacks does wonders for his fighting style, and comboing out of a down air or finishing with well placed back air is the stuff I live for. And despite his size and overall puffiness, his attacks have some serious power behind them. Seriously. I've been playing as Kirby as one of my best characters for months now, and even I'm shocked at how good some of his smashes are at killing. Must have been hitting the gym with those stubby feet of his. I can't even describe everything that Kirby is going for him, because there's just so fucking much. But you want to know what makes Kirby truly awesome though? Copy abilities. While it is something that isn't a necessity, Kirby doesn't and shouldn't need the copy ability to be a good character, but the little bonuses of those abilities can really do wonders against an opponent, especially if you can use their own moves better than they can to really kick some ass. Get some folks real salty. Guys, I just love Kirby! He's a cute as hell character that's silly and fun to play as, with a badass assortment of unique moves and abilities to hold his own on the battlefield. Plus, look at him dance! Ooh, he's so cute! Choosing between 1 and 2 was so hard, you guys. I adore these two guys so much in terms of their playstyle, their personalities, their adaption from their games of origin, and simply just my own personal love for the two of them. But like all things, I had to make a choice. Number 2 is the character, who was my main for almost 7 years, and 6 today as my good old second main, the hero of wins, Toon Link. <laughs> Not only was this little bastard my main for all those years, he was my first ever main. The first Smash game I ever owned and really played was Brawl, and I immediately wanted to play as Link, but playing as him was... 
Hmm. He was heavy and slow and just didn't suit my taste at all. I tested out other characters and the closest one I came to being good as was Meta Knight, who in retrospect is the most broken character in that game. Then after beating the Subspace Emissary, I went back in and found Toon Link, beat him and unlocked him. And everything I ever wanted was given to me. Not only did I have an immediate flow with him, you guys remember his down air, right? God damn, that was a good move. I loved him so much in Brawl if only for just his broken down air, and in Smash 4 they removed the bouncing. Huh. But even without it, I still love Toon Link. Just meant that I had to get good and learn how to fight without it. And now I'm better than ever. The best way I can describe Toon Link from matches in locals and uni Smash events I've used him in is that he is deceptively strong. The power and might this little hero has behind all of his moves is enough to amaze even me sometimes. He's light and agile with tons of projectiles for ranged combat and playing keep away, but still has plenty of options to move in close and kick ass with some powerful attacks. His kill moves to his grabs to his item combos, some people I've fought against are completely blown away by the shit he can pull off. Not to brag, but in those uni smash tournaments I mentioned before, I've won two of them with this guy. His prowess is nothing to scoff at. Of course, a lot of you know that Link from Wind Waker is my favorite version of Link in the series, and that's a big reason why he's so great to me, but the other reason he's great to me is that he was my first main. That's pretty special, guys. When you spend all your Brawl years playing almost exclusively as a character, it stops being a case of playing him just because he's a good character, more so that the character begins to mean something to you. And while he may be my sub-main now, I can always rely on the little hero of winds to back me up whenever I need it. I absolutely love this character, but there is a swordsman who beats even him. With my now sub-main thoroughly discussed, it's time to talk about my proper main. Another blonde swordsman, the Monado boy himself, Shulk! I'm really feeling it! <laughs> Almost everyone I know picked up new mains for the release of Smash 4, and I am no different. Toon Link is still absolutely amazing and I love him to bits, but this blonde JRPG swordsman has managed to crawl his way from a character of incredibly mild interest to the character I've sunk countless hours into learning how to play as. While most people after his announcement responded with a resounding, who? I knew of the character thanks to good old QG, but I only knew of him, not really anything about him. And after I got Smash 4, he was kinda interesting, but not a lot more than that. But it was enough to convince me to give Xenoblade Chronicles a try when it came out to the 3DS, and that game blew my mind. God, it was good. With my new obsession with Xenoblade, I went back to Smash and started playing as Shulk all the goddamn time. And eventually, he had become my absolute best character. People may say that the whole sword fighter thing has been done to death in Smash now, but the Monado ain't no ordinary sword, folks. Not only is it a divine beam sword that looks pretty freaking sweet, it is among the longest reach of any sword in the game. It's ridiculous sometimes if you actually look at it, and of course, it allows Shulk to utilize the Monado arts. Oh, lordy. I may have said I found Robin fascinating with all her tomes and limited use attacks, but Shulk's Monado arts are an entirely different ballpark altogether. The different arts with different stat prioritization practically condenses multiple different playstyles into a single character, giving a massive amount of versatility and utility to his fighting style, to being able to recover from incredible distances, zoom around the stage like frickin' Sonic, survive to ludicrously high percent, deal unbelievably high damage in the space of seconds, and even finish off opponents with ease. Sure, it may take a long while to learn how all the arts work, and even longer to know how to use each one to its fullest potential, in terms of combos, maneuverability, mind games, finishers, and recovery, but when you do, holy crap, the shit you can pull off is absolutely insane. Even after that, you still have the rest of his awesomeness, like backslash that's deadly if used correctly, air slash with effective recovery height plus an attack that can repel edge guarders and even finish off opponents in itself, a beautiful collection of aerials and tilts for combos, interruptions, and sometimes the kill, well ranged and powerful smash attacks, vision, which is just oh so good, a brilliant persona and attitude that's so awesome to listen to, and even a swimsuit costume. Yeah. Okay, I know what's gonna be said. Shulk is a low tier character, and yes, he falls short when it comes to his frame data and quite a lot of areas, but I don't care. I didn't pick up Shulk because I thought he was the best character in the game, I picked him up because I love Shulk, from Xenoblade Chronicles, and now in Smash Brothers. 
We as Smash players have many different reasons as to why we play our mains. From their prowess in competitive matches, a nostalgia from playing them for years, or just the love for a certain game or series, but the important thing is that your main becomes more than just a character on the battlefield. We all put a little bit of ourselves into our mains, and the characters we play have a way of saying a little bit about ourselves. I mean, take a look at who you main and really think about it. Why is this character such a big deal to you? To me, his unique and versatile playstyle, his prowess as a sword fighter, his splendidness as a character, and my love for both his game of origin and him as a whole, makes Shulk my favorite Super Smash Bros. fighter. I'm the Speedster, and next time, I'm gonna finally get all the love I have for Xenoblade off my chest. See you guys next time.